we have 12. Count them, 12 games on tonight. So strap yourselves in and uh, get ready for some, some pretty good games tonight. And um, some some games that are, are, are going to probably change the playoff picture as night to night to night we go. Um, there's 12 tonight. I think there's 9 tomorrow night. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a busy schedule. Uh, and, and this reminds me of some comments that, um, I got on one of my videos yesterday that means I need to make another video about said subject, but I need to get my head out of there while I'm doing the previews. So let's go ahead and get down to it. And, uh, we're starting off with the Flames. The Flames are 29, 19, and 8. They're in Boston against the 34, 12, and 8 Bruins. Calgary, 4, 3, and 3 in their last 10. Boston, 8, and 2 in their last 10. Redditch is starting for Calgary. And Rask is likely to start for Boston. Calgary's third in their division. Boston's second. Now, a lot was made when Smith got hurt. And I understand it looked really bad at the time. But word has come out that he's day-to-day. -day, and uh, it's not as bad as it looked. So, very good news for Calgary fans. They're going to be very excited with this. And they should be. Because... If they had to go with Riddich and Gillies for the rest of the year, or even just for a few weeks, I would think they'd have some problems. But Riddich, playing for a couple of games, if that's what takes till Smith gets back, I think will be fine. Riddich has been fine in his performances so far this season. And for Boston, whether it's Rask or Hudobin, I, you know, I don't have any problem with their goaltending. And um, we'll see if Boston can get another streak going. I... I Again, because gravity often takes over in these situations, and I've watched Boston go through this huge, great streak, and yet there's a part of me that says, "Okay, they're playing really well, but they're they're not they're not a first place team in my eyes." And and I say that as a fan personally. I hope I'm wrong, but they don't they don't look. I look at that roster, and it's like there's a lot of youth in here. There's a lot of guys who maybe they're having career years, but it just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know how sustainable it is, and they're going to show it over the next twenty some games. How sustainable that is. Um, I mean, yeah, it'd be great if they could somehow catch Tampa. And thanks to Toronto for doing us a favor last night by beating Tampa. And yet, um, Tampa gets or Toronto gets closer to getting home ice if those if if them and the Bruins were the ones that meet in the playoffs. So happy that they won. If if we can catch Tampa, I'm not happy that they won. If uh, if they end up getting home ice against Boston, and those are the two points that do it. So we'll we'll find out though. Um, Car uh, Carolina, Columbus, 28, 23, and four in New York against the Islanders, who are 27, 24, and six. Uh, Columbus, three, six, and one in their last ten. Islanders, four, four, and two in their last ten. Bobrovsky's likely to be the starter against Halak. Uh, both teams are a point out of the playoffs, so they're tied in points. And here we go. Uh, the, the winner of this game will potentially find themselves in a playoff spot at the end of the night because every other team is playing too that's in that, that little bunch. But uh, both teams have had their struggles. Columbus is showing signs of coming out of it. The Islanders, every time they show signs of coming out of it, they somehow fall back. Halak and, and Bobrovsky, I give that advantage to Bobrovsky. Um, so what wins? Does the Islanders' offense win, or does their propensity for allowing 50 shots cause them to lose? The problem with that is Columbus has a low shooting percentage, so even if they get 50 shots, how many go in? Two? So it'll be really interesting to see what gives here, because something's going to end up giving, and, and since the Islanders are at home, I would probably favor them in this game. But as we found out a couple nights ago, just because you're at home doesn't mean you're going to win anything. Uh, nine... Nine road winners and zero home winners a couple nights ago. Insanity. And uh, last night, out of the three games, two were won by home teams. So it really is a crapshoot. And I, I honestly think the Islanders probably win this one. But we'll find out. And then the thing, too, is, like, since there's so many teams that are in so close, are you smarter selling off at the deadline and getting back a lot of assets that can lead you into next year? Or are you better off holding on to what you've got with the idea that, hey, if we can make the playoffs, we could do something in the playoffs. And and there are teams that are all in that little bunch, and it looks like some of them are going to go one way and some are going to go the other. And this time next year, we may be looking back at this deadline and saying, hey, X team was really smart, this team wasn't. And, and uh, yeah, this could be this could be that time. Uh, L.A., 30-20-5, uh, Carolina, 26-21-9. Uh, the Kings six and four in their last ten. Carolina five four and one in their last ten. 
Uh, Jonathan Quick's the likely starter. Ward uh, is the starter for Carolina. Uh, Carolina right now is the number two wild card. LA is one point out of the playoffs. And Carolina, of course, has that one point lead over the Islanders in Columbus. Carolina needs to continue uh, their recent winning ways. Um, if, because if they, I mean, if they don't, I mean, let's, let's just say that tonight, um, the Islanders beat Columbus and it's, um, it's a three point game. So Columbus gets a point and, uh, Carolina loses at home against the Kings in regulation. All of a sudden Carolina is out of the playoffs and they're behind both teams. It's just, it's that close. Um, the Kings need to continue, uh, their resurgence, uh, 65 points. They've looked good lately. They are one point back of the of the Flames, but they have a game in hand. So both teams are playing tonight, and they need to stay within one or two points of the Flames to maintain that advantage of that mythical game in hand that may or may not be a win. We won't know until they play it. Um, and, and again, for Carolina, because they have those overtime losses, they get the extra points, but they lose tiebreakers in terms of wins against teams like the Islanders and Columbus. So... Um, for Carolina, they really they really need to just keep getting wins, hopefully in regulation for their sake, since they are going to be playing Eastern teams, not tonight, but they're going to be playing Eastern teams. And you want to win those games in regulation. Uh, and with Ward in net again, uh, even though Darling played against the Canucks, I'm wondering how many games Darling's going to get down the stretch. Does the win over the Canucks, does that give him more games? Or um, has Coach Peters already been set that, okay, Ward's our starter, we're just going to put Darling in on back-to-backs. Is that where they're at? Because uh, it'd be interesting to see if they decide that in the off season, Darling is somebody they might want to move or what they want to do because um, there's always young goalies out there. Like you look at what Vegas did picking up Malcolm Subban uh, and, and there are any number of, of cases of number three and number four goalies coming in this year and looking pretty good. So it'll be interesting to see if, if Carolina decides that, okay, uh, Ward's going to be our starter again, so we'll move Darling out, or if they're going to keep that battery of goalies together into next season and just see if things turn out better for them. Uh, next up, New Jersey, 27-20-8. Philly, 28-19-9. Uh, Jersey's 3-7 and seven in their last 10. Their last four games have been regulation losses. Uh, Philly, 6-3-1 and one in their last 10. And they've beaten New Jersey a time or two. Uh, Kincaid's the likely starter. Neuver's been confirmed. Uh, Philly's third in their division. New Jersey's still the number one wild card, but they're sliding out. And uh, New Jersey is in uh, a bad spot. They and Columbus are the two teams that really had control over their own destiny and kind of decided that for whatever reason, whether it's through injury, whether it's through being outplayed, or whether it's through bad luck, uh, Jersey fans will say it's through officiating, but either way, they're where they are right now and they need to turn it around. Philly has looked really good lately, and uh, we're all salivating at the idea of potentially Philly and Pittsburgh in the first round, although if the Penguins keep playing the way they are, it could be Philly and the Capitals in the first round, and uh, that would be an interesting matchup too, but it hasn't actually become potential yet, other than you know if Pittsburgh keeps up their hot streak, and what are the odds of that after an all-star break? Um, so Philly, Neuver's playing very well. Kincaid's had some shaky starts, but New Jersey in general has been shaky, so I'm not going to throw any shade at goaltending when I think really there's a team-wide issue going on right now. Um, and, and they need, they need to fix it now. There's, there's no time. There's none. Um, you're, you're less than two weeks from trade deadline. You're less than two months from the playoffs. There, there's no time to be going into a losing streak and say, well, we'll figure it out later. It has to be figured out right now. There's there's no figure it out later. Okay, next up. Uh, the Senators are 19, 26, and 9. Pittsburgh's 31, 22, and 4. Ottawa's 4 and 6 in their last 10. Uh, the the Pittsburgh Penguins are 7, 2, and 1 in their last 10. Condon starting for Ottawa. Murray for Pittsburgh. Ottawa's 14 points out of the playoffs, and Pittsburgh second. Um Ottawa still trying to just uh, maintain their, um, their, their. Uh, you know, I keep using the word dignity. Just, just, just a matter of, of self-respect and a matter of um, when fans come to the arena. 
it's important to feel like even if your team's not in the playoffs that they're they're going to potentially win that game. And Ottawa has got better. I know it's those four and six in their last ten, but and they they did get spanked by by the Ottawa Senators. But things have been better for them the last few weeks, I guess. Um, and now they get to go in and play the Penguins. Uh, the Penguins are merciless right now. The The Penguins are back to being the two-time Stanley Cup champions going for their third. Um, I Sorry, I just get a twitch when I think about them winning another one. And uh, they're starting to look a lot like Stanley Cup champions again. Uh yeah, 31, 22, and 4. And, and remember, it was maybe, what, four weeks ago we were talking about how poorly they'd played and how, you know, this, this looked like they were probably done and, and they're they're just playing so well. And they're beating everybody. It's not like it's not like Pittsburgh's had a cream puff schedule. They've had a, a strong schedule and they've still played really, really well. Not as many back-to-backs as they had early in the season. Nobody had as many back-to-backs as they had early in the season, which is why they played so many games. And maybe that played a, a, a role in where they were in the standings. Maybe that was a part of it. Maybe we're seeing what the Penguins can do when they're getting some days off in between games. And just how good they can be. So, uh, you know, tonight Ottawa gets to deal with the juggernaut that is the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins. Have, have fun with that. Tampa, 38-15-3. Buffalo, 16-30-10. Uh, Tampa 7-3 in their last 10. Uh, the Sabres are 5-4-1 in their last 10. Uh, Vasilevsky was listed. I don't think they've they've named their goalie at the time I'm recording this. Uh, Chad Johnson's been named for Buffalo. Buffalo, of course, 19 points out of the playoffs. And uh, Tampa's first in their division. But they're coming off the loss against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Buffalo has been better lately. They've actually pulled up to, I think, their 28th on the power rankings right now. They're, they've been doing well. Um, comparatively speaking to where they were, anyways. The uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning are, are in need of winning this game because teams behind them are still hot. I'm talking about Toronto and Boston. And uh, you don't want to risk falling down in the rankings at all. Uh, as the number one seed right now, they would play Carolina in the first round. That sounds like a series that Tampa likely wins. Uh, they'd win it in goal. They'd win it with offense. They'd win it with defense. Defense is close. I will give Carolina that. But if they fall, fell into second place and played against Toronto or Boston, then all bets are off, and there's there's no telling what could happen. The three teams that are at the top of the Atlantic are very good teams. Um, I Again, I really see Tampa as the, the strongest contender of the three, but we'll find out. Uh, and, and for Buffalo, uh, they're playing for pride as, as usual. And uh, that, that plus 500 record in the last 10 games is at least something. And they scored four goals in their last game without Eichel. So at least they've shown they can score without Eichel. Now they need to show that they can prevent other teams from scoring without Eichel. And they'll get a chance to prove that tonight. Uh, Anaheim, 27, 19, and 11. Detroit, 22, 23, and 9. Anaheim's 5, 3, and 2 in their last 10. Uh, Detroit's 4, 4, and 2 in their last 10. Gibson's likely the starter for Anaheim. Uh, Howard's the starter for Detroit. Anaheim's one point out of the playoffs. Detroit is only eight points out of the playoffs. And I say only, not because they're that close, but because all season we've kind of watched as Detroit's kind of meandering in the standings, and yet technically they can still get back into it because the number two wild card here is Carolina. That's your spot. And Carolina only sits five games above 500. Um, we could see 90 points get into the playoffs in the East. Now, at West, it could take 95, and there'll be all kinds of complaining about that, but in the East, it could only take 90 points, which is why Florida has to be a little bit psyched right now about the fact that they're getting hot at the right time because the Metro is is kind of in the funk. And then tomorrow night, Florida gets to go in and play against Vancouver, um, who have been very gracious hosts throughout the year. Um, so Gibson, Howard, uh, Anaheim, Detroit... Anaheim is in a similar position to Detroit, only in that um, they're not being talked about that much in general, and they seem to shoot themselves in the foot. Over the last couple of weeks, they keep shooting themselves in the foot. So either only 5-3-2 and two in their last 10 instead of 7-3, and three, which is right about where they should be, considering the schedule they had over the last 10 games. 
but I'm not going to beat up on them too much. I, you know, it's 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 fine. They they get eleven points from overtime and shootout losses. But if you look at it and say, you know, if they'd won three of them, then they're in the playoffs right now. And we're talking about what a good season they're having because they'd be thirty nineteen and eight. But because they lost eleven altogether, it makes the record look pretty pretty spotty. Much like with Detroit, they've got nine. They have a 22-23 and 23 record. If they'd won a few of those overtime games, we're talking about how Detroit still in it, still has a shot, and then they'd only be five points back. So let's get out of wild speculation land because that can go on forever. And uh, Rangers. So the Rangers are 27-24-5. and five. Minnesota's 30-19-6. and six. The Rangers are 3-7 and seven in their last 10, but they've won their last two. Uh, Minnesota's 6-2-2 two and two in their last 10. Lundqvist is likely to be the starter tonight because, again, he doesn't understand that the Rangers are supposed to be selling everybody. And uh, Dubnik is starting for the second wild card in the West. So just look at it this way. Number two wild card in the West, Minnesota, 30-19-6. Number two wild card in the East, 26-21-9. Let the argument begin. Um, and, and the Rangers are only two points out of the playoffs. So, again, the Rangers, clearly the team, in my eyes, the last couple of games has been playing much, much better, much more team game going on. And some of the guys who've been playing really well, like Grabner and Nash, um, these are the guys who've been rumored to be going out of town. Maybe they don't want to leave. Maybe this is their way of telling the team, hey, we'll, we'll pull it together, we'll, we'll get some wins, don't move us out just yet. Uh, do I think that's going to change the Brass's uh, mind? No, but it does make it a little more difficult for them if the Rangers show signs of turning it around. If the Rangers are showing signs of getting back into the race and, and, and making something of it, then it's really hard to justify pulling the team apart. And I get it. Fans say, well, look, it's been proven this team's not going to win. We want guys moved out. We're tired of ownership being greedy. But as I said yesterday, when it's millions of dollars you're giving up and you don't necessarily get better next year, it's, it's kind of hard to make that move because you have to look at the team and say, okay, if we move these three guys, we'll be better next year. I don't know. Uh, and that's why when I, when I get to Chicago, we'll discuss that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my view on the Rangers. And for, for Minnesota, again, quietly having a very good season. Uh, if, if Dubnik can get into the top 10 goalies in the NHL and his, his save percentage, and if he can get... If, if he can give them the kind of goaltending right now that he's given them over the last few years, they're in the playoffs. There's no doubt in my mind. And and that division is going to be extremely tight from here going forward. Uh, St. Louis, 34-21-3. Nashville, 33-12-9. This is your game of the night right here, so pay attention. 6-4-0 in their last 10 are St. Louis. 6-1-3 are Nashville. Hutton's the likely starter. Uh, Renee's the starter for Nashville. I actually wouldn't be surprised if they went with Allen. Like, the goaltender hasn't been confirmed at the time of recording this. I wouldn't be surprised if Jake Allen plays. St. Louis is third. Nashville's first in their division. This is a game you have to win if you're St. Louis. 71 points for St. Louis. 75 points for Nashville. Nashville's got games in hand on everybody. Therefore, the only way to catch them, you've got to beat them in regulation when you meet them in a game like this. Um, Hecker Renee's playing some very solid hockey. Anybody will tell you that. Um, their defense is solid, their offense is decent, and for for uh, for the Blues, they've got better since uh, Schwartz came back. This could be a, a high-scoring game. Despite the fact that both teams have stingy defenses and solid goaltending, this could be a high-scoring game. Uh, they both have that high-octane uh, high offense, and both of them should be hungry for the win, which should mean a lot of attacking tonight, not a lot of sitting back. Shouldn't be any trapping in this game. It should be pretty exciting a uh, lot of hitting and and maybe a couple of fights between these two teams who likely don't like each other very much at all. Um, and watch for PK Subban to somehow be a, a big story by the end of the night, whether it's he has a two point game and he plays great, or he coughs the puck up in in his own zone and St. Louis scores and that's the game winner. Subban is a way of getting in in the headlines of everything, um, especially if he's playing in Montreal. And I I didn't do a video on that, but I've always been requested to do a video on on the whole Subban Montreal thing, and I'm considering doing it very, very soon. So we'll find, we'll see whether or not I'm able to find the time to do that soon. But for now, uh, it's on my to-do list. If that if that helps, uh, Washington thirty-two seventeen and six. 
Uh, Winnipeg 32, 15, and 9. Washington 4, 3, and 3 in their last 10. Winnipeg 6, 2, and 2 in their last 10. Holtby hasn't been confirmed. Highly likely Braden Holtby plays. Hellebuck has been confirmed. Washington's first in their division. Remember when the Metro was the best division? Now they have uh, the team with the lowest number of points as division leader. And uh, Winnipeg uh, is second in their division, and they have to be cheering for St. Louis tonight, which is going to be weird for Winnipeg fans, especially considering the beating St. Louis put on Winnipeg the other night. But this is now the world we live in. If they're going to catch Nashville, they need A, Nashville to lose some games, and B, they have to lose those games in hand. So tonight's one of those they have to lose those games kind of things. Uh, Winnipeg is a, a very solid team. Washington's a, a pretty good team, too. Washington has to be looking over their shoulders at the Pittsburgh Penguins who are only four points behind them. And they have to start shoring that up because only four wins in their last ten, it's not going to get it done. The way Washington's been playing, if they play over their next ten games like that, Pittsburgh will be first in the division, and Washington could find themselves down as low as, I would say, maybe third because uh, Philly's playing really well as well. So uh, get it done. You've got to go in and beat Winnipeg. St. Louis showed that Winnipeg can be beaten at home. Can Washington do it? Well, we'll, we'll find out tonight. I'm not necessarily betting on it, but uh, Washington's done things all year that I, I haven't expected. The fact they're first place this late in the season, even though we'll all agree the Metro hasn't exactly been pushing them. Um, here comes Pittsburgh. Uh, it's like Pittsburgh looked at the standings and said, well, if nobody else can catch Washington, we'll do it. Um, so we'll, we'll find out what happens with them, but uh, that, that could be a game of the night, too. That absolutely could be. Uh, Chicago, 24, 24, and 8. They're 2, 6, and 2 in their last 10. Uh, Vegas is 36, 15, and 4. They're 6, and 4 in their last 10. Uh, Jeff Glass hasn't been confirmed. Does it matter? I mean, if, if you're a Blackhawks fan right now, do you look and say, okay, Glass is in that, I'm more confident? Or Forsberg? Or, like, I, I don't know. Uh, and for Vegas, Flurry and Net, uh, Chicago is now 10 points out. They are now a full 10 points out of the playoffs. And uh, Vegas is first in their division uh chicago is in a rough spot and, and the reason that i talk about them needing to trade out one of the veterans and and people always take it the wrong way it's not a matter of of looking at a team and saying okay well you got to trade out these guys are bums at some point you have to look and you have to say okay these guys are eating up this amount of cap and for the amount of production we're getting and when you look at our, our future and you look at our present it's probably not justified now so we need to um, make make some moves and and free up some cap space going into the summer and and so that you know at the draft maybe we pick up a draft pick or two and Chicago is very good at the draft table Stan Bowman's been a very solid GM so really giving him extra pieces and giving him more cap space to work with I think could lead to a faster turnaround for Chicago here's here's the thing uh, the question becomes do you want to do a quick retool and moving out whether it's Taves, Keith, whatever, and I use their names because they, they make a lot of money for what their production is right now, um, you can you can speed it up so next year you're right back in. Look what Colorado's done. Colorado right now is right back in the thick of it, even though they had 48 points last year. New Jersey, New Jersey was out. Now, even though they've been on a, a, a slide, they're still the number one wild card, and all the youth that both those teams have. Chicago doesn't really have that. I know DeBrinkett's having a very good rookie season, but... Chicago right now reminds me of the Islanders at the end of the Mike Bossy, uh, Brian Trottier, Denny Potvin era. Uh, Potvin retired an Islander. Bossy retired an Islander with back problems. Uh, Trottier played as an Islander until he was well past his prime and moved on to Pittsburgh where he won a couple of Stanley Cups. You guys are always winning Stanley Cups when I don't like it. Um, and Chicago right now feels sort of like that. The Islanders stayed a good team. The Islanders were still in the playoffs most of the time until all of a sudden they weren't. And then it was chaos. And they had Patty LaFontaine and Pat Flatley coming up. And yet LaFontaine and Flatley weren't enough to get the Islanders back to where they'd been. If the Islanders in the 80s had just decided, all right, we're going to trade Denny Potman, and I know that's sacrilege in some circles, um, who knows? Who knows what they might have got back? Maybe the Islanders wouldn't have gone through that. Um, and, and it happens at the end of any dynasty. And I'll, I'll say Chicago's a modern-day dynasty. But I think that dynasty's over. And the faster you can turn your, your diminishing returns into something else, 
the the better off your franchise is three to five years down the road. Um, otherwise, you may end up in a in a full rebuild. And the last time that Chicago went through a full rebuild, it lasted quite a while. Like yeah, it netted Taves and Kane and and Keith and all that, but it was quite the rebuild that went on for a long time. Uh, and let's discuss Vegas briefly here. Uh, they lost their last game at home to Philly. Vegas should come into this game with a bit of an attitude. Again, what Vegas really needs is they need to feel a push from somebody beneath them. The fact that their point lead in the division is below 10 now, maybe that'll start making things a little better for Vegas on the ice. Because again, and I said this a couple weeks ago, when you've got a lead by that much, it's easier to kind of let your foot off the gas. Because Vegas can look at the standings and go, well, we lost tonight and that sucks, but we've still got X amount of points ahead of that team, so we're okay. Um, I don't I don't foresee Vegas falling out of first place. I'm not even trying to say that because that's ridiculous. But you don't want to go into the playoffs with kind of bad habits getting into your game because it can be really hard to get those bad habits out of your game. So uh, we'll see if, if Vegas can, can get things going for, for themselves tonight. Um, and Chicago's the perfect team for Vegas right now. Chicago's on a huge slide. Uh, their confidence has to be at a low. Their goaltending's been iffy. Their defense has been atrocious. And they're coming off of a huge loss against Arizona. So there you go. All right, now that that's done, uh, let us move on to Arizona, the aforementioned Arizona Coyotes, who are now only 28 points out of the playoffs. Look out, here they come. Uh, 14, 32, and 10, so they, they couldn't get to a 500 record if they won every game from here, technically. Uh, because I, I if I count overtime losses as losses, that's 42 games altogether. So yeah, they could finish 40, 32, and 10. They could win 26 games in a row, 27 if you include last night. All right, 27-game winning streak it is. Come on, Arizona, let's get you into the playoffs. Uh, San Jose, 30, 18, and 8. Uh, they're both 4, 4, and 2 in their last 10. Ronta and Jones have not been confirmed yet. It's likely. I wouldn't be surprised if San Jose went with Dell against Arizona. Uh, but San Jose's second in their division, and Arizona's not. Uh, they're both in the same division, though, so this is a four-point swing. If San Jose loses to Arizona, Arizona could could potentially only be 26 points out of the playoffs, which that's, that's still a lot. Um, but Arizona's playing well, and, and you're starting to see guys getting more confidence. Uh, Keller's starting to rebound from a really bad down part uh domi started getting the odd goal here and there finally maybe domi seeing his name in trade rumors has had him saying oh wait a minute what um and and it's funny because we always kind of speculate that that players don't really bother with the trade rumors and yet and yet they do um patrick maroon of the oilers said that he saw his name on on the trade center board for from from or for uh, TSN, and that that's distracting to him. That that kind of ticks him off. So players are watching speculation, whether they'll admit it or not. And players are always going to say, oh, that all happens outside the rink. I don't have any control over it. Yeah, those rumors are always out there. I don't have any control over that. I just got to go out and play the game. No, it does affect them. Um, and it's not, it's not just him. He's just the only one talking about it right now. But it does affect players when they see their name in, 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 the, in those rumors. And they admit it after they retire. After they retire and you ask them, they go, oh, yeah, it affects you. It totally affects you. affects your game. You might squeeze your stick a little more. You try to do too much because you don't want the team to trade you. It can absolutely affect them. So uh, maybe that's why with a team like Chicago, they're they're falling out too. Maybe there's players on that team that are worried they're going to get shipped out. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And uh, thank you so much for watching and for you guys helping me actually get... According to YouTube this morning, I got a notice that one of my videos is trending. I got like this flaming thing from from YouTube, but uh, just notification. When I clicked on it, it said an error has occurred. I can only assume it's that the video I did on which teams might be moved in the NHL has passed 100,000 hits. I don't know why that video keeps going. I don't know why it's my most popular video by more than twice the amount of any other video I've got on here. Uh, especially since it was kind of an off-the-cuff, sure, let's look at this kind of thing. But... It works. So thank you guys for all your support and for helping it get there. And I'll talk to you again soon.